These exercises are going to help us practice comparing quantitative data across groups. It says the National Associ Assessment of Educational Progress tested two separate simple random samples of 1,000 13-year-old students, one in 2004 and one in 2008. In 2004, the mean test score was 257 with a standard deviation of 39. In 2008, the mean and standard deviation were 260 and 38, respectively. Is there sufficient evidence? using an alpha of 0.1, that the mean test score was higher in 2008? We can start by writing down our hypotheses. I always tend to write these as the mean for 2004 is equal to the mean for 2008. And remember this parameter is mu, the population mean for 2004 and the population mean for 2008. And in comparison, our alternate hypothesis we we're trying to investigate if that mean score was higher in 2008. When we're going to proceed to do our hypothesis test with this, we want to rewrite these so that we're looking at the difference between the means. And because we're looking at investigating if the mean in 2008 was higher, let's put that first. So the mean for 2008 minus the mean for 2004. And we want to know if that difference is equal to zero. So there's another statement of our null hypothesis. And similarly, mean for 2008 minus the mean for 2004. And I want to know if that difference is greater than zero, if there's a positive difference between them. You often find it helpful to write down a summary of the sample data, kind of all in one spot. So we've got the sample mean for 2008, the sample mean for 2004, the sample standard deviation for 2008, and the sample standard deviation for 2004, and then the sample size for 2008, and the sample size for 2004. So 257 with a standard deviation of and then in 2008, it was 260, standard deviation of 38, and then also a sample size of 1,000. Now before we proceed with the test, we need to make sure that we meet the requirements. Our requirements are first that the data come from random samples, and we have that given in our problem statement. The second is that we're supposed to have independent observations. We really don't but it's sufficient as long as our sample sizes are very small relative to the whole population size. And it's reasonable to state that a thousand 13 year olds is less than 5% of the population of all 13 year olds. The second one is, or the third one, is that both samples are either normally distributed or we have sample sizes that are bigger than 30, which we do in these situations. And then the last is that the samples are independent samples. And there's no indication that they like tested the same people in 2004 as they did in 2008, right? So this is an, a reasonable assumption for this particular problem. Now we're going to proceed to find the test statistic and the p-value in order to carry out this test. So we go to GeoGebra and we're going to open up the probability calculator. Go to statistics. We're trying to carry out a t-test for the difference of means. There's our null hypothesis. And then our alternate hypothesis is a greater than statement. And notice that the direction we wrote our hypotheses here, we're using 1 to be 2008 in GeoGebra, and then 2, the second one there, is 2004. And I usually write those down so I can keep track of which ones go where. All right, so we need to put in our sample data. Sample 1 is going to be our 2008 data. So 260 for the mean, 38 for the standard deviation, and a sample size of 1,000. For sample 2, that data is from 2004 to a mean of 257 in that sample, a standard deviation from the sample of 39, and a sample of size 1,000. Here's our results. We have a test statistic, a t-test statistic of 1.742, and we have a p-value of 0 0.0. 408. So back to our problem here. We'll write down our t-test statistic, 
of 1.742, and then our p-value is 0 0.0408. To draw conclusions here, notice that for our significance level, which was alpha is 0.1, our p-value is smaller than that, so we will reject the null hypothesis and find that we have sufficient evidence to conclude that the mean test score was higher in 2008. The second part asks us to look at a confidence interval. So suppose we want to estimate what is that difference between the average score on the National Assessment of Educational Progress test in 2004 and in 2008 using the data given in our previous exercise. So notice that we're going to be comparing the size, we're going to try to make an estimate, comparing 2008 values to 2004 values. And we want to write a 90% confidence interval. In GeoGebra, under statistics, we're still doing a t-test for the difference of means, but now we're doing a t-estimate for the difference of means. And it does roll your data over previously. Our confidence level is a 90% confidence level. And here are our lower and upper limits for that interval. So if we round to two decimal places, it'd be 0.17 up to 5.83. So there is the 90% confidence level. And then to interpret this, remember that we're talking about this is the parameter. So we're estimating the difference between these two. So we could say we are 90% confident that the interval from 0 0.17 to 5.83 captures the true difference in the average score on the I'm going to abbreviate, okay? National Assessment of Educational Progress test between 2008 and 2004. And that last part's important because it's telling me which direction I'm subtracting. So if your problem statement is 2004 and 2008, then you're implying that you're subtracting in the other direction. Now this is okay. But what does it actually mean? I would suggest that you go one step further when you're interpreting confidence intervals about differences and tell us which one is bigger. So I would say this. In other words, we estimate that the average score in 2008 is between 0.17 and 5.83 higher than in 2004. So what are we saying? We're saying that the average score is bigger in 2008 than it was in 2004 by between 0 .7, 0 0.17 and 5.83 points. Now one more thing I want you to think about. That this problem at the very beginning, I set it up so that I was subtracting 2004 from 2008 because I was looking to see that increase. You might have set it up the other way around. You might have written 2004 minus mu for 2008. What would change? I'd like you to think about that and carry it out. Maybe try it in GeoGebra. Just briefly, we're going to have a sign change on our test statistic. That would be negative. Our alternate hypothesis would be less than zero. 
and our confidence interval is going to have different signs and be flipped around. It's going to go from negative 5.83 to negative 0.17. So the only thing that changes in that, none of that is incorrect, what changes is how you interpret it. So then if you're looking at the negative limits on the confidence interval, you got to recognize that if I was subtracting 2004 minus 2008, that would mean that 2008 was larger than 2004. So same conclusion. You just need to be careful about how you're interpreting your results and be consistent throughout your analysis of which direction you're doing the subtraction.